Hi, my name is Fleur and I'm a PhD student in psychiatry from the Netherlands. Like most of you, my research is on hold and I'm currently working from home. For many PhD students, this can be a frightening time. What will be my financial situation in a year? Will I get my PhD done on time? How to take care of my family while being in lockdown? And how to deal with expectations from supervisors and PIs? I understand that this lockdown time can evoke anxiety in many of us, especially in those with limited contracts, such as PhD students. But don't worry, that's where I come in. I am here to help. In this video, I will discuss five ways how to survive this crazy lockdown time. Well, let's get started. Are you in a situation that academia does not even feel like fun anymore? You just want to quit. And at the same time, your heart is in this research. So you just can't leave it. Well, it might help to think why you started this whole journey. Did you have a genuine interest in your research topic? Did you want to become a doctor, maybe even become a professor, eventually? Did you like the flexibility in the working hours? Did you find a PhD a challenge that you wanted to take on? It does not matter what your reason was to start your PhD journey. Just remember it. Think about the excitement you felt when you applied for this position. The euphoric feeling you had when you were accepted and how motivated you were at the start of your PhD. Do not let these extreme measures take out the joy of what you love doing. Remember why you started, folks. The internet is basically a tool that could provide a lot of value to us. As so many tools, you can use it to do harm, but you can also use it to do beautiful things. Think of a hammer. You can use it to hurt people, but you can also build a very pretty house for you and your family to live in. And the same goes for the internet. The internet could be used to do harm, but it is also an amazing resource if you want to connect with people on the other side of the ocean, or if you want to learn new things. As working from home scientists during this lockdown, we can use the internet for seminars, webinars, online courses, journal clubs, etc, etc. For example, I did a course on survival analysis and am currently working on a course on scientific writing. I was also able to participate in a lot of online seminars and workshops without having to fly to another country to be able to join them. And all these online resources can make you a better scientist, but they might also raise your motivation. After I've done a seminar or workshop, I always feel pumped and motivated. I learned something new, heard about someone else's perspective on science or a scientific topic, and it challenges me to reflect on my own scientific perspective. And after that, I just can't wait to get back to my work to implement these newly acquired perspectives. So just use the internet as a tool to learn and connect. So when you are working from home, you don't have physical places that are separate for your work and your after work life. You can try and create separate places within your home, for, but for many PhD students this might not be possible because their home is just not big enough. I am extremely lucky to have an extra room that my boyfriend and I call the office. This allows us to separate our work life from our after work life and it just works great. Still, it is very important to have specific activities that you know you can relax with. Think of running, baking, reading, gaming, uh, dancing in your kitchen, listening to an audiobook, making music, creating new things, or all mixed together as I would prefer. Find your way to relax and just enjoy. The first point I made was about remember why you started, so thinking about the past. For this point, I would like you to think about the future. And don't worry, don't stress out immediately. This should not be a stressful exercise. Maybe it's better to call it daydreaming. That sounds less scary, right? Okay, so I would like to challenge you to daydream about your future what you want to do with your life, 
what you want to do with your career and what you want to do with you as a person. Who do you want to be? Are you already who you want to be? That's great, keep it up! Are there things you would like to improve? Well, daydream about what it would be like for you if you improved on those things. Are you kinder to yourself or your environment? Are you laughing a bit more often? Do you have a good work-life balance that works for you? And after you have daydreams about all these things that you want to accomplish or who you want to be, just take small steps into that direction. If you want to be kinder to yourself, just try not to criticize yourself for one week or maybe one day if that's the step you need to take. Do you want to create a work-life balance that works specifically for you? Well, you have to experiment with that and that will take a lot of trial and error. But at least you are out there and you are going somewhere and you're making progress. Personally, I would like to have a fruitful career with high quality research and at the same time strengthen my creative skills, grow spiritually and a very practical one, become a better runner. Don't be scared to think about your future, it should be fun. The lockdown measures differ from country to country and even from state to state. But one thing we have all in common, we can't live our normal daily lives right now. To not get defeated by all the things we cannot do anymore, we should appreciate the small things that we still can do. For example, making a nice dinner for you and your significant other. Good food is always something to be grateful for. <laughs> To make having dinner even more special, and I actually got this tip from my colleagues, you can order takeout and create your own restaurant ambience in your own home. Dress up in your favorite dress or suit, put on those high heels, use the cologne. And how is this even better than in a real restaurant? Well, you can choose your own music. It is my birthday next week and I will definitely try this out with my favorite vegetarian restaurant in our city. Okay, so even if your research is on hold right now and you might not be able to attend the lab and work as you wanted to work in this time, there are several things that you can do to make sure your motivation and your determination will not get depleted. And I am absolutely sure that there are more ways that could help you as a PhD student. And if I missed some of your favorite survival tips, leave them in the comments down below and you might be able to help other PhD students. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you next time. You got this.